FIFA 23 is just a few weeks away and today I'm going to show you the 30 biggest mistakes to avoid at the start of the new Ultimate Team. The first mistake to avoid is that you don't need to buy FIFA points to get better players. You can spend £0 on packs all year and still have an unbelievable squad within a few weeks. Learn to trade, get better at the game and you'll soon see your total coins increase. Never avoid completing every advanced SBC at the start of FIFA 23. The packs that the game rewards you with are always brilliant and you should make some nice coins. I packed Cristiano Ronaldo in a 35k pack from these SBCs three years ago. Never ever quick sell rare managers, especially from the top leagues, as they do go up in value over time. In FIFA 22, Klopp can still sell for over 3,000 coins late on in the game. If you're playing the early access of FIFA 23, make sure you manage your time wisely, especially in Ultimate Team. Try your best to trade early on and avoid gameplay when you can. Alternatively, you can complete a few games of squad battles to earn a few thousand coins and then proceed to trade on the web app to save time. Absolutely manage your time well with early access guys as it's a vitally important start to a new FIFA. Avoid making a one league team and using it for months. In FIFA 23, the new star system means you no longer require a league dominant team to make a team work with chemistry. This is the greatest time ever to use a hybrid team of multiple leagues. Don't restrict yourself guys to one league teams anymore unless you really love the Premier League, you know, you do you guys, but if you want to really have an adventure, this is the best year for squad building. Do not forget to invest early on in 83 or above rated SBC fodder cards. Months after FIFA 23's release, there will be pack SBCs which will require a certain rating. This pushes the 83 or above fodder cards up in value. Maybe keep a few investments aside for later on in the game. Now, this is a big one to avoid, guys. If you can, try to gain rewards from multiple game modes each week in FIFA, especially early on. If you play foot champions, division rivals and a few squad battle games, you're giving yourself multiple chances of earning more lucrative rewards by expanding your game time in more than one game mode in Ultimate Team. You may play a full weekend league, not get anything special, however, you did remember to play six squad battles games and bang, you packed an icon from a reward pack you expected nothing from. Don't make this mistake. Do not quit out a match if you can avoid it, as it does affect your coin totals in matches in the future. If you pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition, spend the FIFA points wisely and not all of them straight away on packs. The best way to utilize pre-order FIFA points is to spend them in foot draft, especially if you're decent at the game. That way you get to enter 13 foot drafts. Yes, I did not make a mistake saying that. 13. And if you win a draft, guys, you could earn a 50k or 100k pack. Compare that to just spending the FIFA points on 7.5k packs. It's not worth it. Don't feel like you should complete a brand new player SBC early on just because it's a big name player. Let's say Harry Kane gets a player of the month card for September. Look at his stats closely and his in-game stats specifically to see if he fits your team. A lot of people complete player SBCs without thinking if they actually work in their squad or if they'll be meta in a few weeks time. You never know. Do not ignore players from the Premier League early on. In FIFA 20, I remember buying Alan's Everton card for 19k on launch day. He rose to 75k the next few days when the full game released, which is amazing for trading, and I made 350,000 coins in a day. The Premier League is a different level of hype, and never ignore it early on at the launch. Be very careful overspending on big players. I see this mistake a lot in Ultimate Team throughout the years, especially at the launch of a new FIFA, as they do decrease fast in value often. If you really like how Rashford's card looks in FIFA 23, in a few weeks time he could be more than half the price if not lower, so do keep track of the player prices. Always use Footbin. Wherever you can, whether it's checking all of the stats about a player, a player's current price on the market, Footbin is a fantastic website and I use it every day when I'm on FIFA. Never forget that one, guys. You don't have to play every single game of Foot Champions. People forget about this and it's a big mistake. Weekend League can be intense. So don't feel like each week you must play all 20 games. 
If you're happy with, let's say, 8 wins or you're finding it stressful, don't feel like you have to play all 20, man. You'll still earn nice rewards. Never ever ignore preview packs when they're available, and especially at the launch of a FIFA. Preview packs, although only once per day, might include a high-rated card every now and then. It's always worth doing a preview pack to see what you could pack, and if it's a bad pack, guys, ignore it and wait a day for the next one. Don't quick sell all of your tradable players from packs you unlock. Let's be honest, we've all done it before. We've opened a pack and got three or four duplicate players, and for time reasons, we've quick sold the content for less coins than we could have got. However, if you sold those players, you would make potentially double the coins, if not more, compared to quick selling the entire pack. Try to avoid purchasing players on the cheaper end of the market with the buy it now option. Often you can buy players for cheaper off the transfer market by bidding on the players and it could save you a lot of coins in the long run. That is a big mistake people often make early on. Always complete the starter objectives when beginning Fever 23. They might seem mundane, however these objectives can earn you more coins and more XP in your season progress. Make sure you complete the milestones early on in Fever 23. Now this is a huge mistake I'll see a lot of you guys make in every Fever and it just it makes me go crazy guys honestly. You don't need to score for example 500 goals or 100 goals by yourself. If you score 100 finesse goals in FIFA 23 that could reward you with a 50k pack and you can complete this in potentially three games of FIFA. Invite your friend to a friendly match and help each other complete these milestones for a big 50k pack. With each new FIFA, there are new gameplay additions, skill moves, or even set pieces to learn and master. Don't forget this, guys. The arena is a great place to practice these new game mechanics. So make sure you practice in the arena to learn and improve your game before jumping into your first match. Always check the price of players before listing them. I see so many of you guys doing this and it honestly blows my mind. If you list a player at their minimum price without a buy now price and the servers go down, you could lose tens of thousands of coins, if not more. This does seem obvious, however, so many players list a player without a buy now price, it's crazy. I've done it in the past, guys, and it was a big mistake. Do not avoid learning the new chemistry system in FIFA 23. It's a bit more complex, however, once you've mastered it, you'll realize it's a great change to previous FIFAs. Buying a team of the highest rated players, guys. Don't do it, because they're all not gonna be as amazing as the lower, cheaper rated cards. FIFA can often be strange and you could have Lewandowski and Benzema up front for your team. However, Marcus Rashford and Julian Alvarez are usually better with an ultimate team. It's just how it works. Stats are crazy in FIFA. Don't make a Premier League starter team. Trust me, don't do it. It's usually the most expensive league and you can find cheaper and better players in La Liga or Serie A most of the time. If you pack an icon in week one of FIFA 23, try not to spend all of the coins you earn from the sale on an expensive team straight away. Try and invest the coins into trading or build a solid team but with coins left over. That way you can make more coins with your icon sale in the long run. If you are able to get early access or have the ultimate edition on the 27th of September, try to haul as many potentially meta affordable players from the Premier League early on. This means you can sell these players for big large profits once everyone has access to the full game on the 30th of September this year. Avoid using high-rated midfielder cards with low pace. Players like Tony Cruz, Casemiro as examples aren't normally as overpowered as cheaper, lower-rated options. Avoid using loan players in division rivals or weekend league. Instead, use the loan cards in your best interest in friendlies as their contracts do not expire. Do not stick to the same formations that were popular in Fever 22. Try as many formations as you can in Ultimate Team until you find the right tactics for you. When you start Fever 23 and you get more and more packs, try to save any low value gold card. This will help you complete the bigger starter hybrid SPCs or hybrid league SPCs faster and will save you coins, especially at the start of FIFA 23. Hope you guys love this brand new FIFA 23 video. Hope these tips and tricks help you out at the start of FIFA 23 Ultimate Team and your Ultimate Team journey. Have a great time wherever you are in the world today. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.